So I started this series seven months ago and I always wanted to bring you places that you would expect would defy convention, would be able to survive the decline in the retail market. Uh, well, today I'm going to a place that we can go back three years, we can go back 14 years, we can actually go back 15 years of decline and deprivation. Today, I'm bringing you Grimsby. Grimsby, once home to the largest fishing port in the world, with a fleet of 700 fishing vessels and 6,800 local fishermen bringing in 20,000 metric tons of fish every day. With the decline of the industry, rapidly followed the decline of the town, and it's no wonder when retail started to collapse in the UK, it did so first in Grimsby. This that I'm walking on now is Freeman Street and Freeman Street is the main street in Grimsby and this hasn't just been like this for three years or ten years it can go back over 12 years and this high street has looked like this that entire time now my high street has only started going decline the last three years and it already makes me sad if I live with this for the last 12 years it'd be time to move or something to be done about it This to me is the very definition of undeveloped. You have an industry that's been shut for 50 years. You have a high street that's been dead for 10 years. There is no development going on here. And a place not in development is what's known as a third world country. And we're the sixth richest nation in the world. And our GDP last year was worth 2.27 trillion. And yet, this is the UK in 2024. And this behind me used to be a 1950s style six-story block and it was a monstrosity. Thankfully, in 2019, they tore it down and it's now this green space as you see behind me. You can check it out on Google Maps back in 2018. Well, look at it now. Bit of a green space there. Progress, Grimsby. Like we're seeing in other towns and cities, it's not just retail that's struggling, it's pubs as well. With the White Bear behind me closing in 2016 and it's been stood empty ever since. What a shame. And this behind me used to be Barclays Bank and as we know all banks and building societies are actively leaving the high street this year and have been for some years but this one closed back in 2009. I mean just look at that massive stretch. All it's got in it is one post office and God knows how long that's going to stay there for. Grimsby was once home to the largest fishing processing on the planet. Nowadays, that's all shut down and it is full of unemployed, long-term unemployed, long-term sick benefits, and it's in the top 1% deprived in the country. More and more people are turning to food banks like this. Thank goodness, this isn't the only food bank in Grimsby. Uh, it's not, sadly, it's not open today, but we will be trying to visit one of the other ones that's doing a lot of good in this area. What is quite startling, while most middle-class affluent towns and villages once have ever heard of a food bank, this is only one 
of seven I've just researched that are in this immediate area. That shows the real need for these kind of facilities in Grimsby. Here's another food bank. I'm going to see if it's open and see what kind of things they do. Tuesday and Thursday oh. and um, we do a hot food kitchen on a Saturday night across right. the road that runs our Runner Bean Cafe um, which is well in excess of, of hundreds of numbers wow. that, that go okay. through that. We do that That's in a two hour scary. window. Um, yeah. We're all volunteers, nobody's paid. Right. No, none of us are, I work a day job, I've just come out of work basically because oh, wow. we're okay. having carpets feared in wow. the back. They open the doors here um, half 11 till 2 o'clock Tuesday and Thursday, yeah. every single Tuesday and Thursday, 52 weeks a year. Yeah. So we do that as well as um, the Saturday night kitchen. We run Christmas and um, we do Christmas dinners. So you know, basically you work, you work Christmas Day as well? We don't do Christmas Day. We right. What we do is the guys that come through, basically, um, we cook them a Christmas dinner. So they haven't got cooking facilities as such at home, cookers, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. So we kind of um, put them in, in like foil trays so they can basically put them on plate and stick them in a microwave, right. things like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, we are 52, 52 weeks a year. Yeah. The counter, they check in, Stuart sits here. So Stuart does um, like proof of proof of all yeah, sorts of things, benefits, right, okay. ID, um, what what sort of social but it's, network it's not just in. people on benefits. I'm guessing people with uh, jobs now are finding it hard with the energy crisis. Or um, the, the more benefits Stuart aren't they that, that sort of come through homeless, safe surfers, that yeah. that, that sort of thing, right, NFAs okay. and them sort of guys that, right. that tend to tend to come through. Okay. Um, they basically come through the door. Please excuse the mess, it's not yeah, good, it's not, not it's been fitted, um, got it. generally, so we're emptying the back rooms to come through. Um, they come up to the counter, so Stuart, as I say, Stuart will check them in, what their family or what their network looks like outside right. the doors. Um, and then it's gone to the counter and then they get a parcel accordingly to, okay. to what their circumstances are, whether they're families, children, single people, NFAs, right. that sort of thing. So we offer, we've got a kitchen in the back. Um, that we do hot meals out of, so the homeless can come in Get on a Tuesday and meal. Thursday and sit down, and we physically feed them wow. with okay. a with a nutritious based sort of meal, hot drinks, and then they are sent away again with like a pack up because yeah. they're on the streets. So um, we've got washing machines, tumble dryer facilities for them to be able to wash their clothes, wow. sleeping okay. bags, rucksacks, That's blankets, and it, uh, anything like that. So especially in the winter when they're wet, yeah. you know, and they need they need laundry facilities. So we've got that. We've got that option yeah. as well. So we literally cover the whole thing. As I say, they'll get the parcel from the window. Guys will pass it out. We'll come and sit down on the tables and chairs. A meal's cooked in the kitchen. They'll come and sit down. They'll sit and eat on a plate with a knife and fork. Yeah. But a lot of it is good, goodwill. People just bring it in. Yeah, okay. yeah, goodwill. And um, we, we purchase more than we've ever purchased before. 12 months ago was literally half of the figures of what we're doing now. Right. Um, we literally serve... I'll show you some cookies. So meals tend to look like um, hot soup, a nutritious meal, which yeah. is normally meat, veg, wow. um, potatoes, that sort of thing. They get hot soup and they get hot drink as well. And then last week, our numbers looked like 321 wow. in a two hour window. So that's sort of... That looks good. Well, that was Kelly that gave us that fantastic tour and she works full time, but she volunteers here as often as she can. And she says the numbers going through here are rising day by day. And Dave and Jean that started this back in 2016, they're just seeing the numbers get worse with the energy crisis and with homeless people coming through, it's getting worse day by day. They're even actually starting a dog food bank uh, because there's lots of rescued dogs in the area and the owners can't afford to feed them. What an amazing job. It's very touching and humbling. If you can help out here, I'll put the details on the screen. Please do whatever you can, even if it's just your time. This is a community that's been destroyed and overlooked by the very conservatives they put into power. If it wasn't for charities and volunteers, the community here would be on its knees. Conservatives, you should be ashamed. Oh, hi, yeah. Hello. <laughs> So I'm Sam and I work alongside Alison. Right, okay. And then um, I take care of the art side of things. Right. And she does all the STEM punk side of things. That's brilliant. And who, yeah. what's, what's your customers like? Who are they? Oh, so there's a community around here. That's fantastic. So, um, kids, adults, we run loads of different sessions, loads of different classes. Right, okay. um, so yeah, anything science, technology, engineering, maths, we make all that really fun. 
scribbles upon the door here. Okay. And then come on in. So this is our classroom oh. of curiosities. So all the hampering art you can see, that's all me. Right. And then everything else is Alison. So we have sort of chucked all our curiosities together in one place. Brilliant. Yeah, anyone, adults, kids, um, we have school groups, things like that, Beautiful. you know, just to come in and just to try something new. Fremont Street, how else the street itself is dying. It has actually got a market. Let's go and take a look, see what's inside. Wow, that was Freeman Street Market. And while there were a few stalls shut, I will say, if you're after fresh meat or fresh fish or fresh fruit or veg, this is a place to come. Check it out if you're in Grimsby. So that was Freeman Street. We walked up and down it several times. Um, there were some great outreach programs there. There's some wonderful charities and food banks on there and some great volunteers working hard to help keep this community going. But since the fishing industry died 50 years ago, the retail on this street died way back in 2012 and Freeman Street has looked the same that entire time. People around here must be getting pretty sick of that by now. I know I would be. And this behind me is Macaulay Street. It's on the West Marsh Estate. It's featured in the news recently because a lot of the houses are having to be boarded up because people are smashing the windows and attacking people in the homes. The crime rate is pretty high here with 150 out of every 1,000 residents experiencing crime firsthand. Not a great place to live. And this is the East Marsh Estate. And it's supposed to be the most deprived estate in all of the UK. With house prices here going for as little as £42,000. And average household incomes being £22,000 per household. Now that's five times less than the highest average income in the UK. Where's the justice? Where's the leveling? It's not here. To be fair, it doesn't look that bad. I have actually been to worse estates, far worse. Um, but this is the daytime. I wouldn't like to be here at the night. Matthews Fish and Chips and it's the cheapest fish and chip shop in the country. It sells fish and chips and a side for three pound, which is pretty much doing it at cost. Now it doesn't do it as a gimmick, it does it to help the local community. They also donate a lot of fish and chips to food banks and they've donated hundreds over the years. Now they've been on the news quite a lot and it's been a very warm day today, so if you want to be into Birmingham chatting away with them and the work they do in this community is first class. And this I'm not going to do it. A massive portion of chips, fish, and curry sauce. And this is Cleethorpes, and Cleethorpes shares a conurbation with Grimsby, and it attracts 3.4 million visitors to the seaside and who are attracted to the Victorian architecture, and they come year after year, and I can see why. After fighting for decades in the Icelandic Cod Wars, Grimsby has been let down by successive governments. The Conservatives joining the EU in 1973, which imposed even further fishing sanctions on this town, and with Boris Johnson promising that in Brexit 
did get those fishing quotas back, neither of which has happened. So this town has been in decline for over 50 years. But what is great to see here is the real sense of community. The people that we spoke to at the outreach program, the people that we spoke to at the food banks, and the wonderful things that are going on helping the homeless, helping the poor, and keeping those costs down for locals at Matthew's Fish and Chips. Those fish and chips were wonderful, by the way. So in a town where successive governments have let down the community, they look to the community for help and survival. Grimsby, you've got a lot of soul and I hope things get better for you in the future.